Good day folks, welcome to another edition of On the Bench at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today I'm going to tie for you my micro glint mayfly. It's a mayfly I've been using um, the past little while in the lower mainland here with some success. I used the same one last year, I just used wire for the rib instead of micro glint. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For a hook I'm using a curved hook 1260 number 12 uh, Daiichi. I've mostly been tying this actually in a 14. Um, around the lower mainland here, but a 12 will work fine for when they get bigger. For thread, I'm using Semperfly Nano Silk in 18 knot brown. For the tail, the body, and the wing case, I'm using Rusty Brown Pheasant Tail. For the rib, I'm using Semperfly Micro Glint in brown. It also comes in um, other colors. The other color I've been using with lots of success is the uh, medium olive here. For the legs, I'm using speckled hen in brown. And for the thorax, I'm using ice tub um, hairs here. You can buy this in the store pre-mixed. I've um, mixed this myself. I'm just going to start my thread on the hook here. Bring it right down to the bend. I've mainly been fishing this on, uh, uh, lately on my clear intermediate uh, tip line. It's like a sink, a sink tip with a clear tip on the end and about a 12 foot leader. Um, and that yeah, seems to be working, just a slow hand twist. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the pheasant tail, um, probably about five pieces, line them up here. And I like my tails a little bit shorter on the mayflies, um, just a little less than the shank length. I don't like a long tail. I'm just gonna bring it in behind there so the tails stand up a little bit. Snip that off. over top of that, those butt ends. And next I'm going to take a piece of my micro glint here. And I like this stuff because it's quite strong. Um, quite a bit stronger than wire even. And it's got the little hints of glint in there. For the body, I'm going to strip about same amount, probably about five or six um, pieces of pheasant tail. And I'm just going to even up the butts. Tie them in right at the back here. Bring my thread forward to about the thorax. And now I'm just going to wind the pheasant tail up the hook. So I get to my thread here. Tie that off. Tie that off really well. And I'm also just going to do a, a whip finish here, or half hitch, because with nano silk and pheasant tail, they tend to, it tends to slip out very easily because they're both slippery materials. Now I'm going to take my micro glint. I just got hairs here everywhere, hang on. And I'm just going to wind it, uh, counter wind it the opposite way which I wound my pheasant tail. Nice even turns. Tie that 
that off. And for the wing case, I'm going to take about as many as I need to, um, how I usually measure like how much wing case I need is I put it up against the gape. See, that's just a little bit less than what I want. I'm just going to pull a few more off. I like it thicker as opposed to thinner. I'd like rather have more, so that's about right there. And then I'm going to take it and uh, snip the ends even again. Tie those in right on top. about how far back I want it. Next I'm going to take my feather. So what I've done is I've just um, prepared the feather already by peeling off the bottom part that I don't want and I've got the tip isolated here. So I'm just going to pull these back and I'm going to tie in that tip and I'm tying it in upside down so the dull side of the feather is facing upwards. I'm just going to check that. So when I bring that over, I've got just enough for the legs there. If you have too many, it's better to have too many at first and not um, than not enough because you can always pull more off if you have too many. Next for the um, dubbing, you could use a dubbing loop here. I don't. Um, I find it has a bigger tendency to get in the eye and all over the place if I use a dubbing loop. So. I just like to dub a little bit on at a time here and go over top of it. You can still brush it out if it's like not in a loop. Uh, add a little bit more. thing about hairs here, it gets everywhere. And I want to make sure I'm leaving a good space here at the front clear for that wing case to come down. I'm just going to fold my feather over my legs, hold those right on top and tie them down. Now I'm going to take my wing case right in between those legs and pull that over. As I come to the bottom there, I'm just pulling that tight. I'm going to go in front a couple of times and then back before I snip that off. What I'm going to do at first is just snip it part way off. And then um, how I like to do my wing cases is I put a put a whip finish in there before I chop it completely off. Because like I said before, it has a tendency to slip. And this just helps it not slip out. Because I have had that happen. It's no fun after you finish your fly, your wing case goes awry. And then just snip that nice and close. And then I just take my nail, making sure it's not in the head there. To me, this is the hardest part of a mayfly is tying down this wing case with a nice neat, little neat head. And whip finish. I 
Yeah, it's a good little pheasant tail pattern. Got a piece of, um, I got some guard hairs here just in the head. I'm going to go over that one more time. Try to chop that one out of the way. I'm just going to give it a couple whip finishes here. There we go. Throw a little glue on there. Um, you can glue your wing case. Some people pr like to put resin on their wing cases. Um, I don't. I like it to just look natural and not have too much um, glue on my flies. There you have it, the microglint mayfly pheasant tail. Thanks for watching this edition of On the Bench. Take care, everyone, and tight lines.